Hello everyone, this is Gary DeTonico from MoreThanASnapshot.com. Today I want to talk about some fairly new software from Topaz. It's called Mask AI. And I'm right now I'm using version 1.03b, which is still in beta. And I have to tell you that even though they gave me this copy to review, I am not going to pull any punches. If it's good, it's good. If it's not, it's not. And that's just the way it is. There will, however, be some affiliate links down below if you want to check it for yourself. Maybe it's something you're interested in. But I have to tell you, it's got some bugs. And right now, I wouldn't really recommend it. I've liked other programs that they've had, like uh, Denoise AI and the Sharpen AI. But this one is not one that I would recommend at this point. It works maybe about as well as the uh, masking in Photoshop, the automatic masking. But I think it's got still some bugs that need to be worked out. In fact, when I send an image over to Photoshop, you're supposed to be able to use this as a plug-in in Photoshop, and mine does not work. It just goes through the process like it's going to work, and then when it goes to compute the mask, it just kind of hangs, and I can't do anything else until I restart Photoshop. So uh, there's some bugs here. Now, there are ways of using just the program by itself. I've had luck with um, just using the Mask AI tool, and I have seen other YouTubers that were able to use Photoshop with the Mask AI tool. So maybe it's just my computer that's having this issue, but... Um, Let's open an image and see how it works. And we're going to pick something that's, you know, not going to be too easy for it. I'm going to pick a portrait. And the reason why a portrait is difficult, of course, is because the hair and the flyaways. Now, the basic idea of this is it uses a trimap. So it opens up all in red, and the red is what it's going to get rid of in the mask. And then you can use blue to mark the edges, all the edges where it's going to compute whether it's going to keep it or, or get rid of it. And then you have another area where you can mark in green which you want to save. Okay, so I'm going to try automatic first. Then I'm going to have it detect the edges. And it did that nice and quickly. But you can see here it did make some mistakes. There are middle parts here that are not done. So I'm going to click on the green on the keep. And you can use your bracket keys to make it bigger. And I'm going to paint over all this middle area because we want that to be in the photo. And then I can see some other mistakes where it missed along the edge. So I'm going to go to blue and I'm going to make the brush a bit smaller. And I'm going to go over some of those edges. And I can see some hair that it uh, didn't catch certain flyaways. So I'm going to come out a little bit on that. And just generally checking around. And I can see some area here that it should have just gotten rid of. And the more time you spend painting this, and the better the mask is, you know, obviously the better it's going to come out when it computes. So that looks reasonably good. I'm going to hit Compute Mask. And that happened, you know, fairly quickly. And I can see that there are little hairs here. And it did a reasonably good job. I'm happy with that result to get started with. I can see here one spot where it, it missed some hair. So you can uh, go back. Let's say I take the keep brush and I just gently go over this little strand of hair and it did bring it right back. Okay, now if I want to really check it out, I can zoom in and move around. And I can see that there's like some color fringing in the hair. So if you go to the edge tools, there is some there is some things you can do about this. There is this edge shift. See if I go this way, it's bringing more of the edge back. But if I come this way, it'll take some of that edge away. And if I go to defringe, it'll help take some of that away. And the edge strength. We want to reduce that. 
a little bit more of uh, edge hardness. Okay, and so that's looking better, but it's still not perfect. If I come back to the mask again, let's go back to the compute brush and let's just do the edge and see if it gets rid of some of this color fringing. Let's make the brush a little smaller, a little bit bigger than that. Okay. Come down and check this edge. So overall, it's not bad. If I zoom back out, and then come over to background. One cool thing is you can use the blur um, you can use the blur tool and I can reduce the blur or I can increase the blur. And that could be an interesting effect. You could also replace the background with a color. So um, right now it's gray and um, let's just it's not bad with gray I see a few spots that would be a problem so sometimes if you're going to replace it with a color you'd have to look for a color that is going to blend in a little bit better so let's take it up to white and white wouldn't work either it's got some issues so all in all if you spent a lot of time you could refine the edges a bit better it did do a reasonable job like I said probably about as well as the automatic settings in Photoshop will do but it's still not perfect and if you would still have to spend some time working on it so again I'll put some affiliate links down in the description if you want to check it out for yourself maybe you'll have better luck with it than I did but again this has been Gary D. Tonincourt from more than a snapshot.com